uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could, and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years of working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming, I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. Welcome to On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. And I've got a couple special guests with us today that um, don't always get to be in the more public image. We've got Mac, our creative content specialist. And then we also have Micah, our overall content guru here at Weatherby. So... Those are the official titles that they have. But, howdy, howdy. Um, they have both spent a lot of time in 2020, the crazy year of 2020, uh, working on our 75th anniversary um, content. So Mac did the video. Micah did the book. Um, hopefully everybody has seen both. But if not, you can check them out at weatherby.com. Um, we want to talk about what, make, what it was like making that content. Um, and maybe we'll start with the video because I think that you started that. Did you start that in nineteen? I, I'm already. I started that a little earlier than uh, than we got on the book. Michael had a little more time crunch than I did. Um, so the video, the idea for it, um, we knew we were coming in 2019. We knew 2020 was our 75th anniversary, and we kind of wanted something. Adam came to us and he's like, I want like, he's like, I want like a really cool, really cool short video. That's like, just gets everybody pumped for the weather. 75th anniversary. It's just like awesome. Gets like, he showed me this, this old video about, uh, older, about why we exist. And he's like, I want something like this. Like when I was younger, this video used to give me chills. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we, we set about no pressure. Yeah. Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. Just do something awesome. Just do something yeah. awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's the direction. Um, so we, we set about, uh, uh, Kevin and I at the time set about trying to like brainstorm this and I was telling him we should do this, but I also kind of push for like, I'm, I'm a history nerd and Weatherby has some really cool history. If you follow our history and you've read like the book and other things like that, you know, the, the family business the, and the all that. Book. The first book. The first book, The Man, book. The Gun, The Legend. Mm -hmm. um, or just know some of, just some of the history surrounding it. There's some really cool stuff about Weatherby and how we came to be and how we still are. Um, so I, I totally nerded out on that stuff. And I was like, you know what? We should, we should make a video, like a long sort of documentary that, <clears throat> excuse me, talks about uh, Roy all the way through Ed to now the future of Adam here in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I believe... I believe we started with this idea. I think I approached Kevin about it in uh, probably December of 2019. Yeah. I some of, I was looking wow. yesterday. Some of the earliest files I have are dated like January and February of this year. And we, for those of you who don't know, we just came out with a video in October. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, a So it took a long. while to curate all of the content because it's not like – we just have all the footage of Roy ready and waiting to go. How did you go through all that, and what did that look like? So one, there were there were a few people that were like invaluable in making the film. Um, I got to be I joked around the office, but I got to be like the unofficial Weatherby historian. I got to learn a whole bunch about this company, um, and I have some shout outs like shout out to Brenda. Like, shout out, Brenda. When they moved from Paso Robles here. She had pallets, pallets of like memorabilia and films and stuff like that. And she had to decide what stays, what goes. So she had an awesome working knowledge of all that. And I was able to pull from her, obviously, being right here in the office. Um, Ed Weatherby. Shout out. I got, to, I got to interview Ed on some stuff, and he really helped fill in, fill in some of the years that for me, obviously, I've worked here a little while, but under only Adam's tenure, I obviously did not work for Roy. Um, and then Ed's years, Ed was, you know, more reserved. There's not, there's like, we have crazy, we've talked about this on yeah, podcast before. We sure. have crazy amounts of footage of Roy and obviously tons of Adam being in the digital age, but even in that in-between, Ed was just, he was more quiet, didn't like to be in front of the camera. So there wasn't a ton of that. Yeah. It's even in, um, in modern history, you know, that was kind of a different 
era for capturing content in general. Like he spanned the, the, the bridge from analog capture to digital capture and a lot of that probably exists maybe somewhere. But yeah. You really had to was dig, never, dig to never find. I, I have a, I have a, a recently we sent it off to be digitized 1989 hunt with Ed and Craig Boddington hunting no water buffalo or Cape Buffalo, sorry, in uh in Africa. And that was like when I found that, I was like, I was like, jump from what I was like, I got something, I got something. <laughs> um, so that, and then uh, she doesn't get enough credit, uh, Teresa. I, I was able to talk to Teresa. For those of you who don't know, Teresa is, she's in our customer service. She's been here for 38 years, I want to say, uh, is the number. Uh, I feel like that maybe is a couple too many, but yeah. Is it thir- in, in 35, mid- 38, somewhere there? Mid-30s. Like, yeah. so Teresa mm-hmm. is the only working employee here who has worked at, uh, every the South case facility for Weatherby's ever had. Um, so, oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Did, mm-hmm. Well, technically, she well, worked at South yeah. Southgate Forward. She didn't work sure. at the Firestone, but yeah, fair. But basically, she's the only one who had been oh, the last yeah, yeah, three yeah, yeah. or four yeah. buildings or whatever. Um, so she was another valuable resource because if there was something I didn't know, it's like you know, there's no. This isn't U.S. history where you pull up a textbook and I can like fact check myself. It's like I'm making conclusions from a book these films that Roy made in the 40s and 50s mm-hmm. and then like interviews with people who may or may not have forgotten some stuff. So it was like kind of investigative uh, journalism. It like was, yeah, it was, it was really, yeah. it was really fun to do all that and like uh, get to do those interviews and talk to people. So those, those people were invaluable. And obviously I talked to Adam and he was able to help me with some of that stuff as well. But it was, it was, that was a really cool part of it. Like just getting to spend some time and learn some of that knowledge from, people who had seen all these phases and like i said i was a history nerd so i was i was crazy about it like there's some cool history yeah and you've kind of became um the historian before uh moving to sheridan um dean rumbaugh uh was shout was out pretty much the historian he'd been there 50, 50 his is the eight i think his is 58 oh, yeah, yeah that's i correct. think Teresa's 35 he's 58 correct so he had all the info and um you know, he wanted to come to Sheridan, but couldn't yeah. couldn't make the move later in life. And um, you know, probably California might be climate wise, well, maybe the only thing that's better than Wyoming. Mm. It depends on what you're into, I guess. But um, yeah, so now you you and Micah have somewhat become forced historians, which is pretty cool. It's been, it's been cool. It's been fun, and and we've talked about we've talked about Dean and and Dean. Even I I made some notes for this podcast, but there's some cool stories, you know. You get to investigate all this, and there's so much information. Mm-hmm. It's 75 years worth of history, and even though it focuses around one company and one family, we made the video ended up being I think 24, 25 minutes long, and the book is 200 and so 240, 240. Yeah. Uh, something like that. Uh, well, I, I lucked out because I'm kind of the new guy coming in, and Mac had done all the legwork and you know investigated, finding all this stuff, digging, talking to people. Um, you know, and so it was kind of, it was easier on me to just, you know, hey, Brenda, I'm, I'm struggling to find, you know, kind of this piece and uh, just to, you know, go down to the file cabinet and like pulling out these ancient, you know, filed stuff that she had organized. So, um, I mean, and then getting to talk with you, it was like anytime I ran into problems, I had people that I could go to to, you know, help find, you know, where where is this or um, so I felt like. You know, that's that Mac. You need to give a shout out to yourself because I it you helped me a lot. I don't have a button for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I would. Yeah, I appreciate that, but I, I wouldn't say your job was easy either. Trying to crank out that yeah, book in the amount yeah. of time that you had. Micah, you got thrown to the wolves a little bit. <laughs> um, behind the scenes, we we knew we wanted to do a book um, for most of the year, um, but we also knew we were looking for um, a, a graphic design a graphic designer, which that's not all of your job. It's a portion of your job. And uh, we didn't want to have somebody start that project and then hand it off because that substantial of a book, you probably would have spent more time reworking how somebody previously had done. So we had this general concept of the video flow kind of follows the book a little bit. I mean, it's it's somewhat chronological. The book's not perfectly chronological, but... um, but you just, you started in August? Yeah. Um, so from August to... Well, I didn't start the book till October. <laughs> so that was, uh, 
yeah, it was definitely a accelerated timeline. Um, uh, but you know, with, with getting to meet and it kind of helped me go around the office and get to, to meet a lot more people. You know, I was downstairs in engineering, um, looking at stuff on the walls, trying to find, uh, some of these, you know, the imagery and the assets of the old stuff. Um, and, you know, really relying on, on Mac, uh, cause he well, is the historian now, mm -hmm. um, to kind of help, help me find these assets and, and then, uh, mirror kind of how, what he was doing. Um, and then just p putting it together, you know, um, that, that was kind of a big daunting task, but when you, you know, break it down into sections and then you start each day and you, and you kind of work your way through it. Um, but it really, I, I enjoyed like, so you got to do the investigative side of it. I enjoyed, um, seeing things, especially being the new guy, uh, the people come to life when you see, you know, like the earlier photos and then this progression and then really get to seeing like the testing, the shooting of the trees, um, the <laughs> Afri Africa stuff. Talk, talk, um, what's the shooting of the trees? Well, so Roy did the, his testing and, and, you know, kind of back in the day, you know, if it's gonna, if this cartridge, if this round's gonna destroy a, a diameter, a sapling, you know, tree, uh, that's going to have some killing power. It was kind of the, the idea of the thought back in the day. So <laughs> Roy, he had some, he had some awesome, you can find literally all of like, well, not all of his films, but several of his films we've digitized and, and put on YouTube. Some of them we used in the, the, the video and, but you can find the full films online. And one Mike is talking about, I want to say it's called a, it's a TV segment called you asked for it. And it was just a, like wrote in a letter and then he appeared on a local, like, local TV station or something promoting his rifles and you can see Roy out at the bench, you know, shooting through bulletproof glass, blowing up gallon yeah, buckets of water. Yeah. He shoots a tree and it cracks in half with the old timey music going like he did some, he did some crazy stuff. And it was back in the day. There's one quote in that too. He makes, he makes some crazy claims, uh, which, you know, it's back in the day. There's no fact check or anything. It was maybe we shouldn't say it or not, but he's talking about his, his 300 Weatherby, mm -hmm. which was, to this day, I still think his most popular cartridge that he developed, but for sure. um, awesome cartridge. He's talking about it on this TV show, this You Asked For It, and he's like, um, but the 300 Weatherby will kill any animal you hit if you hit it anywhere in the body in a single <laughs> shot. And he's like, well, maybe not for the TV host, maybe not for some of us less or lesser shooters. He's like, no, no, anywhere you hit it on the animal, a single shot. I was like, boy's got some swag. Uh, yeah. Well. Well, so on what you're talking about is like back in the day, the thing that's cool is, you know, with the rudimentary crude stuff that he had and being self-taught, uh, he was get out there getting it done and shooting stuff, experimenting, wildcatting and, and doing these things. So that's kind of uh, exciting to me as, you know, kind of getting into into the rifle stuff uh, and, you know, been in the industry for a while and, and ammunition and loading and stuff. So it's, it's uh, super interesting. And... Uh, and and just to go back to then f seeing this progression and then going getting to the end of it and seeing uh some of the stuff that adam and brenner are doing on their hunts and like going when you go through every photo of a hunt yeah you, you get to see it get a feel for how the hunt went and you're like oh wow that was, you know that was pretty hardcore or mm -hmm. so yeah there's some there's some cool cool old stuff and that and i i just enjoyed watching the films reading the books and that that really it gives you an appreciation for where we've come from like as yeah. this company and where we're going obviously you talked about the the new generation adam and brenda like it's cool to see that innovation is mm -hmm. still here mm -hmm. it's still doing cool stuff so mac after we launched the 75th anniversary film that that week uh we also launched a bunch of never before seen footage of hunts with roy uh, that's you came across that stuff in your research Where, where'd that come from so those we we had on some dvds and whatnot and these were some of the films i was talking about there's there's you asked for it it's a tv segment there's impact which is a self-made film he would roy was obsessed with recording things he recorded everything the guy is from he, you know he lived in the 19 he was born in 1910 and died in uh, 1988 i want to say mm -hmm. and it's insane how much he recorded as soon as cameras and stuff started coming around and you know, the forties and fifties and they became popular, took pictures of all we have stuff from his safaris, all that, all his hunts. But those hunts, we fortunately had uh, digitized copies on DVD. They're sort of our archival footage. Um, we haven't saved here. There is an Alaskan doll sheep hunt. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, that one's super goofy because they're wearing uh, they're wearing like kind of like those like cloth almost hazmat type looking suits that are all white. And the best I can figure is they wanted to look like doll sheep oh, to no like kidding. to to yeah. trick the sheep into thinking they were just white spots on a hill. It's just kind of the uh, you get to see hey. the evolution of hunting too. Like hunt, I I do hunt filming for a living here at Weatherby, and it's it's crazy to see like where it's come from and how we still do some of the same things and how other things have completely evolved. Yeah. Um, and then his self-made film impact is just about him. He, for those who know the story of Roy, he was a wild catter and he loved, uh, loved creating ammunition. And his famous quote is I had a hobby and that hobby happened to be guns and ballistics. And he just sort of got into it. Uh, the guy sold car insurance Mm -hmm. when he moved to California and just, happened to start a world-renowned rifle and ammunition manufacturer because he was obsessed with it and he was a perfectionist so those films we had on hand and they were they were like that complimentary to the book the man the gun the legend those were like some really good really good learning points to learn about him and to research and then obviously they make for awesome footage for the documentary film we got Mm -hmm. that you know that real cool historical looking footage i love that look yeah yeah some of the in the book some of the coolest things are yeah. The historical images. I mean, it, it was a different world back when Weatherby was really getting off the ground and movie stars and people and politics were like front and center with Roy. It's and crazy. And he did a great job kind of using that as his marketing. And we can't even get the, you know, movie stars <laughs> to return a phone call if we wanted to today, you know, because it's a faux pas. A little, a little different time. But some of the imagery, um, both in the film and in yeah. the book, were just were awesome what were what were some of the cooler ones that you came across oh uh man there was a lot on just a side note i was thinking about this when you said that like talking about the movie stars and the faux pas today Mm -hmm. this was uh an anecdote either in the book or i can't remember where else i read this he was literally like you know he was roy was known for being next to hollywood and getting those actors in and stuff like that there was an actor can't remember his name at this exact moment but studios literally would push this guy to go m- and take pictures with Roy because he was going to play like a Western character or something, and they no, wanted him uh, to be it seen. Yeah. It, give it, it, more gives, it gives him validity. Yeah, yeah. It's some, like some street cred. Yeah. Like, like you're going to go and uh, you're going to take some pictures with this guy who's a big hunter, sells to all the Hollywood guys, and yeah. it was to jumpstart this guy's career. Just like wow. that was – that's the shift from yes. where we are today. I, I doubt there's any Hollywood producers that listen to this podcast, but, <laughs> but take note if you are and uh, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> James Cameron hit. Me up. <laughs> I mean, I, I I think there's a few that are uh, when they kind of do more of a military videos. Peter Berg. Uh, yeah, Peter like, Berg's you know, big they, one. They kind of um, hang in that hang in that circle. Um, Shout out to Peter if you're listening. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> uh, I I remember uh, finding an old old file and like you know crusting it, you know ripping it open and. Uh, well, trying because the pages are stuck together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying not to damage uh, anything, but just finding these old gems of, you know, the hand, uh, uh, the 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 tool that's laid out, and they're like having cutting hand cutting uh, the stocks, yeah. but it's the repeater, so there's twelve or eighteen. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, just some of those imageries, and they're and they're oh, just perfect. Yeah, you know? and you yeah. got to see some pictures. Like I was working on this this video for like a year. And Micah comes in and we're trying to crank this book out, and all suddenly all hands on deck. Is he got to see some pictures I never even saw? Like I'm like, well, I wish I had that. Like yeah. there were some of those old yeah, old school ones, like the guys working at the bench and stuff. Like those were awesome. Those are yeah. those are really good. It, it's really, really, really hard good. to narrow down like some favorite images and favorite pictures, but I I loved I loved having the historical footage because without that, it's just a slideshow. And yeah. the fact that we yeah. had like I had yeah. four or five complete. 15 to 30 to 40 minute films of Roy like that makes that makes that project in my mind so much better it's like watching sure. those old World War II documentaries it's not just a bunch of pictures like it's thousands of hours of footage and just he, really uh, he's coming to life like because yeah. I see it on the page you know uh and in, in the pictures but instead of it just being the slideshow him come to life him saying what his hobby was that famous quote and uh talking about his cartridges and stuff was just it's cool to watch those old things the, the guy exuded confidence like you could tell it, sure. the way he walked in his videos he's just like yeah he, he was in charge wherever he went i feel like I, i'm gonna ask you both a tricky question and one of you guys is gonna get a little more time to think about it while the other answers but the guy signs their paychecks right so how was it working with adam <laughs> on these projects 
I I would say it was pretty it was pretty interesting to get thrown into the fire and have the accel- accelerated timeline. But mm-hmm. watching Adam uh, let me put my mark on on you know some things, but then in other areas where, like where he knew exactly where he wanted, um, having a clear defined uh, you know uh, goal and and. Uh, describing what he wants uh, was very was helpful. Uh, heavy book. I want it to be heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a substantial book. I mean, nice paper. Every, yeah, I mean, around. archival photo paper, uh, satin finish. You know, hundred pound. Uh, it's it's a quality quality. Yeah, uh, you have coffee not, table piece. Not checked book. out this book on our website. It's it's an awesome looking book. Micah did an awesome job on it. It looks really good. Oh, thank you, sir. So, Mac, same question. How was it working with Adam? Um, so, yeah, it, it was it was certainly something. Uh, at, like I said at the beginning, I actually pushed for this video. And Adam is uh, – I've gotten to know him working here almost a couple years now, and, and then I go on the hunts. So we have a we have a really good culture here at Weatherby, I feel, and I mm-hmm. feel like our, our CEO and president is not a distant figure. He's a guy who walks around the office. He wears a hat and a flannel every day. <laughs> pretty or, or a vest. Or a or vest. vest. Or a yeah. vest. Um, but between that and the hunts, and they're just, you know, him and Brenda are very personable people, uh, getting to know them. Got this pretty good working relationship, but I had to push for this film because Adam is very much in the now. He, mm-hmm. he will joke about it himself. He's not like, I don't know what happened yesterday unless I shot something. Like, <laughs> that's just the way it is. And he's like, I don't care about this. It's old pictures and it's old, it's old videos. Like, I want to see the cool things we're doing now. So he really wanted that cool bang, bang, bang video, which we did make. You can mm-hmm. also find that out there. Um, so I kind of had to, had to push for this project. But once he started to see it come together a little bit, mm-hmm. um, he started to get interested. He's like, wow, this is like... You know, this is a real. This is my family history. Like, this is a really cool story. I, exactly I got, a, I got, a, I got a yeah. couple of tears out of him when he watched it. The the <laughs> final cut, and I was like, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but he was like, it was great. Him and Brenda were super helpful. Uh, they supported it the whole way through, and were there to you know write scripts when I needed like personal bits. They were there to help me find like because you know they've lived it. I was mm-hmm. able to learn a lot and where the footage and stuff. But we have. We have footage and pictures that have been through like 10 different marketing teams or whatever. So yeah. it's like narrowing it all down. Brenda's got filing cabinets. Like yeah. they were, they were literally could not have done it without them. And it was no doubt. It was a ton of fun to work on it. And they were supportive the whole way. And in the end, I think everybody was really proud of it. What so. was the hardest part about, about getting this thing done? Ooh. The timeline for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah your timeline was crazy. Um, and still amazing that we got books out and people that ordered before Christmas already have them. It's yeah, crazy. It's, it's yeah. pretty. And it's Christmas could, Eve Eve right now. Happy, Mike could, happy Christmas yeah, Eve Yeah, Merry Eve, by Christmas by from Weatherby. <laughs> yeah. We got beautiful snow last night. Uh, Micah didn't even get to see the book before customers did. Yeah, yeah. He was out Why sick. not? Why not, Micah? <laughs> yeah, I had to uh, quarantine. But, uh, <laughs> mm. We got it done. <laughs> Just in the nick of time for the Rona got I'm, me. I'm glad that it happened. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that it happened. <laughs> all, but if it had happened like two or three weeks prior, oh. that would have been real bad to get that thing wrapped up. So I would have brought you that laptop home the first day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would have been. That would have been rough. Um, so what was the hardest part Hardest part. Hardest part was definitely uh, – it was definitely the gathering and piecing together like footage and pictures from like, you know, 75 years, you know, you watch the film and it's like, it's cool and it makes sense. Yep. And all these <clears throat> things look like they're chronological and all that, but they don't start that no, way. It's, no, it's like 10 hard drives and our server here yep. and like then photocopying and scanning things in. And like, it's, there's an unreal amount of information that's on the folders between Mike and I for pictures and videos and stuff like that. Yes, yeah. Uh, speaking of which, I need to clean up. Uh, yeah, your desktop might work. Your desktop is a little, yeah. little, bit, little bit messy. <laughs> Mac, I would have thought that you would have said the voiceover. <laughs> I was, well, there's, there's parts of the voiceover that were not getting the voiceover that was difficult. The, the changes to the script, those those can be... But they weren't the challenge, I don't think. How long is the video? How many minutes is it? 24, 24 minutes, 25 minutes. minutes. That's a, I mean, and it's narrated like the pretty For the most, yeah, the yeah, time. Yeah. That's I, a lot of words. But it, but the story writes itself. I mean, yeah, I, that's I, a good point. I wrote some of it um, and and then Brenda and Adam wrote other parts mm-hmm. or, or like changed some stuff up where like, well, we want to say this or we don't want to say this or that wasn't directly true or I asked Ed and he's like, well, actually this happened. 
but the the story I actually had too much information. I, I made a note about this to talk about it in this podcast. There are so many stories that happen over 75 years, even if you just focus on one family. Like if we were to focus on your family, Luke, for 75 sure. years, you could make probably a 10-hour movie if you yeah, just focused how to be awesome. all the... <laughs> how to be awesome. A story about the Torkeldsons. <laughs> uh, there's just there's, there's some really cool things that didn't even make... I, I was trying to make them in the cut, but eventually in a film, you have to leave some stuff on the cutting room floor because of the, how the flow works and yeah, stuff gets yeah. left so out. So what didn't make it? Uh, we talked about one of them, like uh, Teresa working here all those years. We talked about Dean a little bit because mm-hmm. he's 58 years, but Teresa doesn't necessarily get all that love because we just kind of didn't flow, but she's been here forever, worked at all those stores. Um, in 19... Uh, 89? Is that a niner? Eight, 1989. <laughs> uh, Weatherby started their move uh, from Southgate to Paso Robles. Mm-hmm. But the, so basically the headquarters moved, but some stuff had to stay behind. Ed commuted like an hour and 40 minutes for five years to Ooh, uh, from, South, from, from Southgate yeah. to work at the new headquarters because they didn't officially move in until 1994. That's brutal. And because yeah. of that, Adam remained in Southgate and did his schooling there and whatnot. Because of that, with the exception of Roy, who started the company, Adam is the only Weatherby generation that is not, like, started on the floor doing, like, boxing or something like that. he wasn't at the floor. He was not. Every uh, Weatherby <laughs> has had, like, a high school job working on yeah. the floor, but he didn't. His high school years weren't there. Even Brenda. Brenda boxed because yeah. uh, there was another that these all lead into each other. There's a quote from Adam's younger sister. I believe it's his younger sister, Jessica. I might be wrong. Shout out. Um, she, Adam and Brenda dated a very long time and they dated very young and it's mm-hmm. sort of a family story you get to experience in the film. Uh, she, w- she didn't even remember a time before Brenda. Doesn't she's remember She's been a, she's been a part of their Brenda. family so long. Wow. And they Brenda. 14, I believe. Yep. 14. And Brenda worked out on the factory floor for some time. Van- she can box vanguards with the best of them. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And um, we've, we've, we've all we've all done it. I, I've, I've been have boxing. Have you boxed Vanguard I'm, yet? I know. I He's not had the right of passage. You've been boxing books. Boxing books. Well, I yeah. was going to say my fingers hurt from uh, from the books, and I and I have just barely got. I just barely got back doing it. So you guys have been doing the bulk of all the work. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we have. Yeah, <laughs> it's about time, Micah. Uh, there's there's ah, there's so many cool ones. There's in 1981, we made like only 200 of them. We have one down in the showroom. These silhouette pistols. They're those yeah. mm-hmm. bolt action. Don't get to talk about those. Uh, yeah, that, that's some of the stuff that... Uh, some, like of the, some of the individual models that, that maybe yeah. didn't make its way in. Yeah. The Mark 22, we have a huge fan out there. Well, the, <laughs> um, the scopes, there's some old... Uh, the Imperial scopes, yep. Uh, cutaway schematics mm-hmm. of things and the, that, that didn't make it in um, the book. Uh, there's just tons of cool stuff, but... Y- you know, like you said, it's and that was like tough because what do I want to yeah. I want to show everything and present it, but stuff that I have you know one random little schematic. How do I fit this in? Yeah, it doesn't doesn't make sense. So those are some of the things that you just gotta come out here to yeah. share and maybe go see you down in the yeah. shop. And we yeah we might drop a nugget in here to there in the film, but you don't get that backstory, which right. like I, that's why I right. highly recommend checking out the new book and reading the old book. Like you get a lot of this stuff. Uh, even a day, uh, Sheridan. You know, Ed like came out here and visited the governor yeah. and the mayor in like the '90s, mm-hmm. and they considered, and then they decided to move to Paso. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's just we mentioned that in the story, but you don't get other thing other in anything other than a five second blurt. He considered yeah. it. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Sure. But he came out here, did all that. Well, they, they were busy or, or uh, had a new product launches. And, yeah, and so it was kind of lost, yeah. and then they. It just, it's, there's well, so much. Yeah, and they, there wasn't the, the dire need to get out of California back then. Yeah. It was like, hey, we, you know, taxes are probably getting higher and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, it's still <laughs> be a big consideration <laughs> to move. Yeah, Every, know, everyone's states. getting out of California now. <laughs> yeah, now, yes. Mac, there is a part in the video about the cartridges, the timeline. Mm-hmm. It floats through. I think it's, it looks really, really cool. Um, how did we get that done? Like, what like get technical about how how you did that <laughs> really technical yeah yeah it was a template <laughs> a template hey that's cool i it did looked, i did like the timeline. <laughs> it looked really yeah, good it was good but um it was an after effects template but it, we i i i oh a we, our website has that information so our website was super useful for that like the cartridge timeline 
is awesome. I think, shoot, how many cartridges should Roy invent in his tenure? Oh, Roy? We have total uh, four, 15 four, right four, now. Yeah, 15. I want to say 11 Ed created, or 12. Ed created no, so the 10. 240. No, no, sorry. He created the, the, the 416, the 3378, 338, 378, and 270. No, 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 that was Roy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. cutting out the other yeah. ones because it would be easier to narrow it down. Uh, there's one more he invented. He, he invented four, and Adam currently has got the one out. Yeah, six five three hundred kind of was. That as, was the yeah, final was, one. It was the yeah, the transition. Was the transition. So program. Ed probably or Roy probably made ten cartridges, and those are what's in that timeline. It's everything from the two fifty seven, two seventy, three hundred. Yeah, yeah, his yeah. first ones all the way up to his final, which was the two forty Weatherby. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just got some cool information. If you watch it, you can sort of pause it, look at. It. We actually used. Got all these background pictures and this cool style. It's actually the same specs for all those uh, cartridges, but it looks real cool. It's it got the schematics amazing. and I, all I, that. I think it's yeah. it's really cool the way it flows, and um, I I was really happy from like a cinematic experience how cool it looked. I, I think we got a good variety. This video was originally going to be three videos. Mm-hmm. It was going to be Roy, Ed, Adam in the future. Yeah. Um, and then we're like nobody watches things in parts. We're doing it all in one. <laughs> <laughs> um. And it's it's really cool actually now I think how they flow together and yeah. how you they flow together but you get totally different there's a totally different tonal shift from like Roy's time to mm-hmm. what Ed's tenure was to now Adam and we hype up in the music and it comes in a big flourish and finale and like there's there's just distinct differences between all of them and I think it shows in the film, um, but that one that that section is cool I think we shared a little short of that to social media and people really liked it if I remember correctly it was a story or something yeah. I think it turned out fantastic. Well, it's a, it's a great, uh, like, sit down 24 minutes, I think, at, as somebody's, you know, new, especially me, mm-hmm. new to Weatherby, mm-hmm. coming and, and getting to learn about the whole process, the whole move, the, the company, the history. I mean, it, it really lays it out such a nice, easy way to, and, and enjoyable to watch and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, h- help me, and then picking your brain and having you help me and uh, help with, I'm not, the wordsmith uh, <laughs> that Mac is, so uh, having him help help with writing and uh, helping me with my project. Dude, working on the book was super fun, though. Like we got, I got to spend a lot of time with Micah working on that book, um, and and he did the brunt of everything on that. I was just like, where do I find this picture? What do I put here? Where, when, when, <laughs> when did this happen? Which I was having to help along with, but it, it, no. it he did an awesome job. And uh, this the book is, uh, if you haven't checked it out, it's like a. It's like a picture book. It's a coffee table book. Very nice book. But it's not just all pictures. Like, we do. We have some of those those nuggets of history in there and stuff. Yeah. And like, some cool stuff. Yep. There's a lot of captions. It's it's not wordy. I mean, there's yeah. uh, each section, there's like a paragraph or two that kind of introduces what, what that section's about. But yeah. then... It tries to lead it in a little bit to kind of give a premise to, to what the images are you're going to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we have the am- ammunition yeah. So, yeah. section, yeah. too. So. We got some really cool ammunition things between the, the movie and the, the book. Yeah, I, I love I love the the uh, cartridge portion in the book. Just yeah. having having the ballistic comparisons, even for versus other popular cartridges that are similar. Uh, yeah. I didn't love uh, proofing the <laughs> ballistic section. But, you had uh, some help, <laughs> Doctor H. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. I got to throw credit <laughs> out shout there. Out. Yeah, um, big shout out there. But we got like you know I I think we have like these three three different levels or three different ways you can reach people to talk about like we have people who are visual. And they're going to watch that film. Whether they're going to watch the short one, like Adam probably would, or whether they're going to watch the long one, like a nerd like I would. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, next level is you've got, you know, oh, I don't know if I want to sit down to watch a 25-minute video, but I might casually flip through some pictures. You're not just going to get the pictures. You're going to get some of that history in there too, whether it's told through the lens or whether it's told through the yeah. captions. Mm-hmm. And then if you're like all aboard the Weatherby train, get the uh, get the older book and like learn about the, the total history that helped uh, inspire the film and stuff yep. like that. Like there's, there's something for everyone. I feel like now. One of the cool things, just on a personal note, for me with the with the video and now the book, um, is I think there's a certain pride for all of us in in working at Weatherby. Yeah. And I remember sitting down at home on the couch on Thanksgiving and showing my in laws here in Sheridan. Um, they're from Texas, but they are visiting and. Uh, we're just sitting at the couch, and I pull up the 75th anniversary video, and we watched it, and they're like, you work there? 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> Are you kidding cool. me? How cool is that? Yeah. And and now um, i well maybe by the time they listen to this it'll be past Christmas, but they're getting a book. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I got to order. A I, I got of those. some some presents coming out to you. Yeah. It's a great it's a great Christmas present. By the time you listen to this podcast, it's too late to get it for Christmas, but birthdays and just because is a great reason. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sweet book. Yeah. So um, it, it makes me think about, Mac, there's probably people listening to this um, that are like, how did you get this job? That sounds like my dream job. How how does somebody get into doing, uh, and I'll get, to, I'll ask you the same one, Micah, but, you know, Micah being more graphic, you being more uh, video, how, how'd you get into this? So how did we find you? Uh, <laughs> I found you, Luke. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the, the, what I do, I guess, uh, if we didn't explain it already, I can't remember. Basically I am the content producer at Weatherby. So I film the hunts that Luke or Adam or Brenda go on here or some of our other uh, executives and what have you. I'll film them, take the pictures. If you've seen anything recently on our YouTube channel, uh, it's a hunt or something. It's, if it's in the recent years, it's likely that I shot it. So that's kind of. That's kind of what I do here, and then the pictures. Were Sounds terrible, Mac. It's awful. I want to do it. It's How do very, I get into it's it? It's very cold, Luke. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, that one time I came out to help pack elk, uh, <laughs> I was surprised that you survived because you did not bring the stove. I offered you a stove. You didn't want to take my stove, and so it was. It, that was he's referring uh, to. We recently had a, a hunt with Adam and Brenda elk this year, and they both got two beautiful bulls. But it was very. Very cold. We'll, we'll probably have so a podcast about we, that. We hiked in together to help <laughs> yeah, them yeah. pack out, and I remember walking up on their tents. So Adam and Brenda had the bigger, yeah. bigger uh, <laughs> seek outside. Uh, I did TV not tent. sleep in the same tent with my uh, and CEO and his wife. Yeah, but so. then you had another smaller. <laughs> this is great. This is great. Also, yeah, seek tent. outside. <laughs> so we walk up, and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, what is happening here? Because there was so much water. Pool. <laughs> if, if frozen chunks wa- yeah. all melted off. If, if your tent was originally like <laughs> 20 square feet, it was down to like four. <laughs> it, I mean, the there wall was started no, closing. It, it, it you just curled it up looked, in a ball like around the center pole. It the, looked muddy the, and messy and gross <laughs> and awesome. <laughs> yeah, the tips of my toes and the top of my head were wet every day. <laughs> well, yeah. your sleeping bag was soaked. Yeah, I was awesome. loading it in the pioneer, and I'm like. <laughs> Dude. Um, so I, so I, how does somebody get yeah, to, ha, to go ha, suffer like that? I, I, I don't have the, the total answer. Everybody's journey is going to be different. Uh, but I started off in uh, like freelance video and then working on sets. I was in Nashville, Tennessee. So I worked on reality, uh, TV. I worked on commercials, lots of country music videos. Um, mm-hmm. But I grew up hunting. and I loved hunting. But I grew up hunting in the Midwest, and then I moved to Tennessee. Which is just like hunting here. It's just like hunting one. here. I pack my tree stand 40 miles into the back country, all <laughs> 50 pounds of it, throw it up and wait for a deer to cross. Um, so it was, it was just – it was a totally – I grew up doing it, but, you know, this Wild West game, it's the way to do it. But I, I hadn't done this. And it's an I, adventure. I had a love for the outdoors and, and – uh, hunting and I didn't like living in the south it's a little hot there for me mm-hmm. um, and I miss these snowy Christmases we get we got some lovely snow outside but I basically uh, googled video and film projo- or jobs in Montana and Wyoming as I just wanted to move out west and Weatherby was moving I was like oh I know them they make rifles like all right <laughs> let's see what this is all about and uh, on a whim did it told my wife I was like how do you feel about Wyoming? <laughs> What'd your interview process look like, Mac? Uh, got on a phone call with uh, our director of marketing at the time, Kevin, mm-hmm. and uh, did a couple phone calls. Uh, and got to the point where it was like, uh, you know, he was like, we'd had a couple phone calls. I had a phone call with you, him, and Adam. Mm-hmm. And I was actually, obviously, I was nervous going into that one, but I was a little nervous afterwards because I thought like, oh, I didn't think that went so well. But... Kevin called me afterwards, like, oh, I thought it went great, and talked me up. He's like, we could tell you were nervous, but um, it's all good. And he, eventually, I got the call that, like, hey, we're gonna bring you out here for an interview. And so, you know, you're a filmmaker. You're kind of like, what's your interview? So I had the terrible, terrible job of coming out here and filming Luke and a couple other guys, Adam and Ryan Callahan, on a pheasant hunt over the mountain. Worst interview of my life. (laughs) 
<laughs> hey, I, I will say from a technical aspect, trying to capture and get birds moving birds through the air and are focus. the worst. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I, I, I would be a little uh, uh, worried. Yeah, we we're we're in you know December now, and so Luke and I have been doing a couple uh, couple bird hunts here, trying to capture some footage. Yeah. And there's nothing I hate more than trying to capture footage of a bird. <laughs> An yeah. elk just stands there. It's nice. Yeah. It's yeah. like, well, all right, we're going to set this dial. And the bird's like, oh, I'm here. Yeah. Um, so well, I, I'll, I'll say one thing, Matt, because I think you had you had abilities, and we knew that. And I think in the interview for us, it was more about attitude. And um, I think that's where you've done a fantastic job. So I if people are it. willing to uh, or wanting to get into the outdoor industry in whatever capacity and, and start filming stuff, like you got to embrace the suck. Yeah. Like, uh, yes. Hey, that's my motto. It, uh, yeah. It's hard. Uh, we, we went, we got to go to Alaska yeah. back in um, August uh, for a caribou hunt. And holy mosquitoes, Batman. Mosquitoes just, and rain. <laughs> yeah. It just miserable conditions. And uh, you're, man, you're just like running around. Wait, let me get ahead of you guys <laughs> running through the tussocks and just fighting it. Um, but, never down. So I think more than the ability, I think that's probably the most important thing in my opinion, uh, to see somebody that's just willing to put the effort in. Cause not a lot of people are, they, they say they are, but they're not. And, um, uh, you are, which is pretty cool. I appreciate it. And there is one more resource too. uh, shout out to, uh, uh, stone glacier, Zach Bouton. Shout out. He's got a whole course he does. on, yeah. uh, out, I can't remember what it's Outdoor called right photography. now. Outdoor yeah. photography or filmmaking. Yeah. So the the we have a pretty good relationship yeah. with those guys. Sure uh, Zach's a pretty cool guy. You can check out his thing. Uh, he's partnered with uh, Steve Stephen Drake or it sounds familiar. Uh, I can't remember who exactly. Yeah. Uh, but they they I know they came in here and talked about it on a pad- yeah, podcast. They did. They so did. I know there's that resource out there. And well, then just work hard, like Luke said. Yeah, well, at the core, we've all got to work really hard, right? So, Micah, what about you? If people are like, man, I want to make cool books. Yeah, um, well, you probably need to get a graphic design degree uh, or learn. Do you? Well, Do okay. you? <laughs> Come on. Okay. My film degree helped me a lot. Well, <laughs> no, it, yeah. it helps. It helps. There's a, there's a plethora yeah. of Adobe programs out there. and there's For sure. People that are probably – you know, know the latest trends and, and programs, software even better than me. But um, the, the the degree, I think, is probably going to help you get your first job. Yeah, get you in the door. Like, yeah. I had my first gig was a promotional shop in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, and, you know, it was pretty brutal. But, hey, it was my first job. I was just out of school. Um, you know, and before that, I was breaking rocks, working in concrete construction. So I was happy to get my first job. Um, and then uh, – I, I, I knew I wanted to get into the industry, so, uh, and I was getting married at the time, and my wife had a bunch of friends, for, uh, uh, roommates in college that were from Oregon and Montana, so I was kind of looking at the, uh, shout out Leopold, and, you know, that Northwest area, because um, there's a lot of outdoor companies and brands, and then uh, Kaylee actually found, uh, my wife found, uh, shout out, <laughs> yeah, uh, an opening at Hornady. Um, Hornady is a ammunition manufacturer in, in Nebraska, and in our you know home state. So I said, hey, you know what? I'll uh, I'll try. And uh, long story short, I ended up working there uh, six years and got you know just a wealth of industry experience and knowledge. Mm-hmm. It kind of grew my skill uh, skill set. And then um, you know I was just looking to grow, and the the whether be uh, moving to Wyoming really perked my interest uh all of ours apparently (laughs) yeah uh but Wyoming doesn't exist so anybody listen to this this is right it's It's actually terrible you should see the footage of when i was driving yesterday full white out yesterday yep passing the snow plows on the highway um so yeah i mean after just uh kind of talking to uh you know my wife we did we we wanted to do a little western adventure and we thought the timing was right um and so that's kind of you know uh and for something that had such a good brand name, family owned, I came from I came from a family owned ammunition manufacturer, mm-hmm. um, who treated me you know extremely well. It was an amazing place to another you know uh, family oriented uh, get to be around wonderful people, get you know uh, treated well, and uh, it's just been it's been a great experience so far. And I'm still kind of the new guy, uh, 
even though we've been hiring a lot. Uh, we have, especially on the production side, but um, yeah, we don't have a lot of turnover per se. I mean, we hired 70, no, 80 plus people in the last two years, two and a half years. I know we came over so with... There's a certain amount yeah. of turnover that kind of just comes with that, yeah. but... Um, Man, it's it's a lot better than I expected it was going to be in the last two and a half years. So, um, the the quote unquote office jobs. There's uh, typically we don't have very much turnover there but at all. So I think that's a testament to the culture. Yeah, I think sure. we've got a pretty good pretty yeah. good place going on. So, well, as we land this plane, uh, if you have not yet checked out the 75th anniversary video, you can find it on YouTube on our homepage, weatherby.com. Uh, and then if you're interested to pick up the book, if you haven't already, also on our website, they're 75 bucks for the 75th anniversary. You can find them in our in our shop and uh, check out with them there. And uh, there may be sales coming up to you. There could be sales from time to time, but uh, we did run one back at Black Friday or Cyber Monday. And um, I don't I don't see one coming anytime soon, but uh, you never know. Uh, 2020 has been a crazy year. It's not a good time to to give anything away right now as far as doing a sale because my goodness we can't keep anything in stock and so we apologize if you're out there and you're looking for a weatherby uh firearm on the shelf or ammo we know it's hard to come by as as is all every, things every in every this night, industry right time. now but uh, but hey those yeah. box those books are hand packaged with love by us individuals yeah, right here bet. for yeah. you so you <laughs> and and you're doing that because they're so busy on the production floor um there's literally no one to uh, help do it because they, we're all already working overtime to try to get more products <laughs> out the door. So they're doing everything they can yep. down there, and so we're doing everything we can up here to get them get them out the door. Yep. Well, guys, Merry Christmas! Thanks for uh, joining, and um, thanks for listening. <laughs>